Good morning, everyone. This is a morning filled with promise and a morning that we will fill it with praise and adoration of a God who has given us so much and continues to give us all of this to celebrate. What a great day it is to worship and what a great day it will be to continue this day into fun and celebration because I am Pastor Maria Campbell and on behalf of the people of Heritage United Methodist Church, I want to welcome you. If you are here for the very first time, I welcome you um, and I invite you to uh, come to our website. Let us know that you are worshiping with us and when you do that, we will uh, honor that um, coming and, and letting us know that you are with us by making a special donation in your honor to Harvester's Food Pantry. But I'm excited because today is Blessing of the Backpacks, and that's going to take place at 7.30 tonight, and that's going to be a wonderful opportunity for our families to come, and we're going to have um, a little organized um, opportunity, socially distanced, in our cars, in our church parking lot, where I will have the opportunity to pray with the kids and bless their backpacks, but before that, be still your hearts. We're going to have Chalk Art um, Palooza, which means that on Saturday and Sunday, if you will go to our church website and you will sign up for your own particular spot in the church parking lot, you can do some chalk art for some um, Old Testament story that you want to portray on our parking lot. And, um, and then there will be some judging on Sunday afternoon, late afternoon, early evening, and uh, a prizes will be given. But most importantly, we'll, we'll decorate our parking lot with some good news stories. And we can't wait for this opportunity to have socially distanced gathering, but most importantly, to celebrate our children and children's ministry. But here's the really great news. We're going to do this chalk, chalk art palooza with children of all ages. So whether you are three or you are 93, you are welcome to come and uh, do some drawing in our church parking lot. Please sign up so that you will have your own spot. Um, we're going to do it at 45-minute intervals. That's why it's important to sign up. Uh, we want people to make sure that you're keeping your distance. If you have any questions, please contact Susie B at heritageumc.org or call the church office and talk to Miss Susie. You can uh, leave a voicemail if she's not in. But uh, know that this is an exciting weekend for us, and blessing of uh, the backpacks will also be live streamed. So if you're not able to be here in person, uh, you'll be able to see that um, live streamed. It is a great day to be worshiping. It is a great opportunity to be celebrating all that God is giving and doing for us. And now I invite you to a call to worship. Good morning. My name is Jameson Biza, and I will be serving as your liturgist. I also serve as a student and pastoral ministries intern. Please join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. We will sing God's praises. Tell of God's wonderful works. Our hearts rejoice in the Lord. Seek the Lord. We constantly seek God's presence. Please join us in the song of praise, I know. I know that I am so 
It is so good to be with you, friends, and we know that God is good, and we love to be reminded. You know, when we're thinking about how good God is, we think about all the stories that God has given to us about God and Jesus and all the things that God has done to take care of us and all the things God has done to be near to us. And today's a really great story about what one of the things that Jesus did to be near to his friends. And so um, I was talking to, to Mike and to the rest of the kids beforehand so that we would kind of be ready um, and, and we would have a little bit of understanding of what the story was about. Well, Jesus had been with all of the people for a long time, and he was getting a little tired. You know, Jesus loved being with the people, but even when you love being with your friends, and you know this, sometimes you get a little tired. 
So after a really good long day, when he had fed all the people, um, and you remember that story about the five loaves and two fish. Miss Susie loves to tell you that story. Uh, well, a, on that day, at the end of the day, all the people went home, and all of his buddies got in a boat, and they went out on the Sea of Galilee. Well, Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. And Jesus loved to do that because he loved to talk to God and have a nice prayer time. And when they were out on the boat, the wind came. And when the wind comes, the boat goes further and further and further out into the middle of the lake. And Jesus was up praying and prayed and prayed. And, and it made Jesus feel good, and he felt nice and relaxed and felt good. And him and God had a really good conversation. And early morning, Jesus went out to meet his buddies. You know, that was a great thing because Jesus loved his buddies and he wanted to be with them. And he thought, you know, they might be surprised because they probably fell asleep on the boat. And sure enough, they probably did. And, and they might be a little surprised about how far away they were from the shore. And so um, he did something a little unusual. And I'm going to tell you that when I told Mike this story at first, he was pretty surprised. And to tell you the truth, he didn't believe me. I said that Jesus went walking on the water. And he said, no, Mama, people can't walk on the water. And I said, well, you and I can't walk on the water. But Jesus could walk on the water. And so we went back and forth a couple of times. And I said, well, would you please just let's listen to the story. And so he, he agreed to let me keep talking about the story. And so um, Jesus went walking to his friends out on the water. Well, guess what? His buddies thought it was a ghost. They got so scared. They went, ah, oh, it's a ghost out there on the water. Because, you know, it was dark. It was early in the morning. They couldn't see really well, and they were tired, and they probably got sleepies in their eyes. So Peter who's always a little bit courageous, yells out to them and says, Is that you, Lord? And Jesus said, It is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter says, If it's you, call to me. Tell me to come. And Jesus did. Jesus said to Peter, Come. You know. Peter went stepping out of the boat and walked over to Jesus. Now, that's where we're going to end our story today. That's not where a lot of people end the story. People tell you a whole bunch about Jesus. But today, we're going to be thinking more about Jesus than we're going to be thinking about Peter. Because this tells us something really big and important about Jesus. Because remember that thing I said? Jesus was concerned about his friends. He knew that because the wind blew up and pushed the boat way far out into the middle of the sea, that they would be really far from shore. And they might be pretty scared when they woke up. And Jesus loved his friends so much. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. He had compassion. He had care for his friends. So he wanted to be close to them. He wanted to be near them. Jesus wanted to be near his friends. So he went walking on the water. Now, Mike decided to believe me. And he knows that the reason why Jesus could walk on water is because who is Jesus? Jesus is God. Jesus is God. So Jesus could do things that camel can't do and squirrel can't do and little sis can't do and I can't do and you can't do. But Jesus can do amazing, wonderful things. Like you remember he could feed the 5,000 people with five loaves of two fish and he can cure the man who couldn't see. He could, do, he could calm the, the storm. And he could do amazing things. And one of the things that he could do that was amazing is that he could walk on water. And he did that because he loved his people. 
and he wanted to be near them and take care of them. Now, the reason why I think this is so important to tell you is because there's somebody else that Jesus loves that much. And, and I was talking to the kids about that today because some of them are getting a little concerned because we were talking about blessing of the backpacks and we were talking about, you know, why we're going to bless backpacks. Now, I know that we're not exactly sure when school's starting and we're not exactly sure about how school's going to start, even though some of us have that date, September 8th or September 9th. But, you know, families are still figuring out how that's going to work. So they're getting a little nervous at our house about what that means and if summer's really going to be over and who they're going to be hanging with and if they're going to be home. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're just thinking about those things. And I told them, you know, the thing that we can always be sure about is God's promise. And God's promise is that God promises to be near us. And no matter what's going on in the world, whether there's illnesses or whether there's big storms or whether some people get fussy with us or upset with us, God loves us and God promises to be near us. And, and so I hope you will all come on Sunday night to get your backpacks blessed or whatever, your school tablets or whatever it is that you're going to bring if you go to school or if you're homeschooled, whatever you're going to use ought to be homeschooled. And I will bless it. And if you can't, know that Miss Susie's going to have special packets and she'll deliver them to you. And I'll be blessing them as well. But wherever you are and whatever you're doing, God is near you because God loves you and God will protect you. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you because you keep your promises. You promise to love us and take care of us and to always be near us. We love you, God, and we thank you. And we thank you for sending our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. And we all say together, amen. See you next. Well, actually, I'll see you later on today. Bye-bye. Please join me in the morning prayer. Gracious God, we are grateful that you do not forget your promises. Draw us close, even when we forget to come near. When we wander, remind us of your great love and forgive us. Grant us understanding of your word and peace in our hearts. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The Lord is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who come call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Please join us in our musical invitation to prayer in Christ alone. We will be singing the first, second, and fourth verse. <laughs>
As we enter into a prayer, I would invite you to quiet your thoughts and center your hearts on God. These have been unsettled times for longer than any of us would have imagined or desired. And we have come a long way as brothers and sisters in Christ in this journey. I am grateful for your faithfulness and I am grateful for your prayerfulness. And now I would invite you to be present with the one who is able to do that which we call upon him to do. Gracious God, we praise you for being near us when the waters get rough and the waves threaten to sink our little boats. We fear that the waves will overcome us, but you have promised to be near us at all times. You call to us to reach out, to take our focus off our own panic, and to place our trust in you. You ask us to reach out to others with the same kind of love and compassion that you have given to us, Attune our hearts and our lives to hear your call and to respond to you in faith. Today we have come to you with burdens and cares. Our seas are not calm, but you offer us a lifeline. Be with us, Lord, and be near us. Guide our lives to follow on the path that you design. Give us courage and hope for a future that holds your promises and strengthen us to be truly your disciples, Christ's living presence in the world. Protect those who are serving on the front lines of this pandemic and grant them strength and courage. Protect the workers who care for the rest of us and attend to our needs. Guide our scientists and researchers to find answers to discover the most effective vaccines medicines and protocols. Comfort those who are sick and those who are grieving. Direct the decisions of our leaders so that the lives of all of our people will be kept safe and healthy. And precious Lord, we ask that you hear us as we silently lift to you those who are on our hearts and minds this day. confident that you are already at work in each one of these lives, we speak the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
now we hear the voice of truth coming from the Word of God. I invite you to open up your Bibles, open up your phones or your laptops, and turn to Matthew chapter 14, beginning with verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is God's word for the people of God who are open and willing to hear what God is wanting to share with them this day. Please pray with me. Gracious and amazing God, we have come this day to hear a good word from you something new, something fresh, something to challenge our spirits, change our direction, maybe blow a little wind in our face, Lord, because things are getting a little stuffy. We seem to be caught somewhere between sheltering in and getting out and not knowing which direction to go. So God, we trust in your power and your grace to show us the way. So give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and wills that we might be transformed by you. And let the meditations of each and every one of our hearts and the words from my lips be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So um, you can imagine how it might feel if you put yourself in his shoes. You've been working hard for more days than you can remember, and you really want a break. It not, you're not asking for a vacation. You're not asking for even several days off. You just need a little break. You just want to get away for a little bit. Seems like there's a few hours that you're going to be able to pull it off, so you kind of go off and you sit and you think you're going to do some, have some alone time, and I don't, he certainly didn't know how it happened, but the crowd starts to gather. And there he is again, people gathering. He cannot help himself. He's got a compassionate heart. He starts talking. Next thing he knows, he's feeding them. And it's been another long, long day. At the end of this day, he sends his team onto the boat. He knows if he gets them out into the boat, he gets rid of them quicker than if they stand and debrief afterwards. And he sends the crowd along the way. And then this time he does get up onto the mountain. This time he is going to get some alone time. Imagine what <laughs> it must be like for Jesus just trying, hoping for moments. He loves these people. There's no doubt in any of our minds that he'd gone above and beyond in his love and his affection and his care and his deep regard for all these people. But the human part of the divine human um, was exhausted and he needed some space. And so he just needed them gone. And so what he does is 
what we have heard over and over, so many times we've heard this story. And, and so I, I really want us to hear it in just a little bit of a different way, okay? Like, don't, don't listen to those, those messages you've heard so many times about Peter. Let us not focus on Peter this day. Peter's a great guy. Um, but but, but let's, let's think about Jesus. Because Jesus, you know, Jesus had a job to do. And Jesus had come for the people. And, and Jesus had to keep himself fortified for the people. And he knew what his job was. His job was to come and to love and to show the love of God so that we might be able to love one another as God loves us. His, his purpose, his mission was clear, to teach others how to do what he had come to do. And so, like, you know, man on a mission, got to focus, got to do it. But how to refresh himself with regularity so that he could keep on keeping on. And so on this particular day, even though he had a plan, the plan didn't work because people showed up, and so he fed them. Um, and he did it like he, as he always did, you know, the guy said, let's send him home. He said, oh, no, you feed him. And you could hear the grumbling, oh, sure, great, we got to do it again. And, you know, he does what he does best. He multiplies, you know, blesses, you know, praises God, blesses, and, and all of a sudden there's enough food for 5,000 men. Of course, nobody counts the women and the children because they're like, chattel. But, you know, we can just imagine there's at least another 5,000 women and who knows how many kids. And so there's so much food left over that there's 12 baskets full. And, and he finally gets everybody gone. And he finally gets his team, well-trained team, onto boats where something they're comfortable with. I mean, so send your people in a way that's going to, you know, be in their comfort zone onto a boat Send him on to the sea. He didn't, you know, maybe he wasn't thinking about whether or not the wind was going to come up. It always comes up. Um, and so um, he sends him out onto the Sea of Galilee. And um, he gets up on that mountain and he prays. And, you know, because he's Jesus, you know, he can get pretty refreshed in one night. So early in the morning, he goes walking out to meet them. And um, they because, become terrified because, you know, they're groggy and, and they see somebody walking towards him. And he says, take heart, core, take core, take heart, it is I. In Hebrew, those are the same words that God says to Moses. It is I, Yahweh. It is I, Yahweh. Do not be afraid. I'm here for you. They were out there on the water. They had gone further than they had anticipated. They were his people. And he was going out, out of compassion, out of care, out of concern, to be near them. It was always about caring for the people. It was always about showing them love and compassion and mercy and forgiveness and understanding. This wasn't all about Peter's story, which you so frequently hear when you hear the scripture passage you know, exegeted. It's always the story about how Jesus takes his focus Peter takes his focus off of Jesus, but I want to keep our focus on God because I want to ask you a really good question. Why did Peter get out of that boat? Why did Peter get out of that boat? Because of God, because of Jesus. Like Peter's why is the thing we need to be focused on. Peter's why is God. Peter understood who Jesus was. Maybe not in the fullness of what we understand. Not that he is fully human, fully divine. But what Peter under you know, <laughs> good old Peter, man of action. He says, is that you, Lord? If it's you, Lord, tell me to come. Jesus says, come. He gets out of the boat. That's what someone who's really not thinking about what's going to happen 
gets out of the boat, gets kind of scared, falls in the water. You know, but, you know, that's the same Peter who, like, one minute says, when Jesus says, who do you say I am? He says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then two seconds later, he tells Jesus not to say he's going to die. And then, you know, Jesus has to say, get behind me, Satan. I mean, over and over, he's putting his foot in his mouth. He's like rushing in into action, but not really fully understanding half of what's coming out of his mouth because he's, he's, he's just like overwhelmed with what's going on in his life. But the one thing he's got is this faith and this belief that this is the Messiah. I mean, he doesn't get the fullness of what that means. And, 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 and what impact that will have on his life, what the, the fullness of what it is the Messiah has come to do, and how that Messiah, this Messiah, is going to save him and God's people. But he believes in what God said. God said, I am sending the Messiah. And this guy comes and he starts feeding multitudes and he starts healing the broken, and he starts curing the blind, and he starts, like, restoring <laughs> people to walking, and he starts doing all these miracles, and Peter says, I get it. Because God is working through Jesus, Peter gets out of the boat. Peter can do what Peter cannot do on Peter's own because Peter believes in Jesus. He has faith in Jesus. He doesn't understand how this is all working, and he doesn't really keep the focus all the time because he keeps messing up. We know he just denies him at the end. He denies him three times before the cock crows, but, but there's this part of him who still believes he's the Messiah. These are unusual times that we're living in. These are hard times that we're living in. It would be easy for us to get on the boat <laughs> with the rest of the disciples that are sitting in the boat and go, look at that, Peter. He forgot to look at Jesus and he sank. That Peter. Lost his focus on Jesus. But then we kind of have to look in the mirror and say, oh, that Maria, she's kind of whining about social distancing and wearing a mask and not being able to gather. You know, so like we, we better not be tossing any stones during this period of time. What we need to be doing during this period of time is Figuring out our why. Why are we able to get up each morning? Why are we able to be doing this thing that we are still doing in these difficult times? What is our why? And I've spent weeks thinking about this before today. And I am certain that I can stand here with full assurance and tell you my why is because God. My why is because I believe that I am the child of a God who loves me without question, even when I'm messing up big time. Even when I forget to say thank you, even when I forget to say I'm sorry, even when I forget to say, boy, I blew it this time yet again, and I know I just said I was sorry for that yesterday and the day before and the day before that, and somehow you keep forgiving me, and you are merciful, and you are gracious, and you are kind, and you are compassionate, and you are just. Because God, I am here on this earth, on this, on this planet, because God, 
And, and my life is so blessed because God, and we have this church and this faith community, and we are able to do all the things we are doing during these difficult days because God is a God who is still gracious in these difficult times and is showing us a way through, and, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel because God is pointing us in that direction. And sometimes it does seem darker than other days, and I get it. Sometimes when it's our family members who are sick and we've lost someone that we love and our, our person just got diagnosed, I, I'm not making light of this difficult situation. Our hearts are breaking, and I know it. But God has promised to be near us. And I have never lived a day in my life where I have not felt God's presence in my life. And God has never proven anything other than God has been with me. And I will testify that each and every day. Because on my darkest days, God has proven that God has been sitting next to me in that hospital room. You know, cheering me on when when I was worried about my darling. And God has continued to be with me when I've been sitting in that hospital rooms cheering on your family members and the family members of all of my congregants in previous churches and all my own family members. Because we have a God who keeps God's promises. Because God, God has been faithful. But that's my why. I hope it's your why. I hope that as we continue to look into our future of why we are called into this ministry to serve one another as God has served us, as Jesus came onto this earth to save us so that we might be in the business of sharing the love of Jesus Christ with others. When, when Jameson was reading to you the, the words from Romans, you know, um, the, the people who are reading 365 this year are in the book of Romans. Be praying for us. We are not in an easy book um, this period of time. But when, when he was just reading to us um, that the same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous for all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? Guess who's supposed to be proclaiming? And guess who God is sending? It's us, folks. We're God's people. We're God's messengers. We're the people that God wants to share the good news with the uh, people who have not heard the good news yet. We're the people that we are blessed to hear the good news. And as we hear that good news and God fills our hearts because God is near us, because God has kept God's promise to be near us, and God has not left us alone, God has never forsaken us, God has never forgotten us, God has never not forgiven us, that God has always been by our side, and God has said, let somebody else know I'm by their side too. And by the way, when you're there by their side telling them that I'm by their side, would you please let them know, put in a good word for me, that Jesus loves them? And that I will never forsake them. And I will always be with them. And my promises are true. And let me be there. Why? Because we, we, we need God to be our why right now. Because when people get sad, they need something they can hold on to. Even when they're alone. And you can't be the one that they can get a hold of. Let let them always have God to hold on to. I trust in you. I trust you'll be faithful. I trust that you will remember this challenge. I trust that you will remember that God is your why. Because God is near to you, 
you will want God to be near to all the people who don't know yet that God is near them. Go spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You are cherished and beloved. You are a child of God and chosen for such a mission as this. May all the glory be to God. Amen. I would just like to invite you to continue to be as gracious and generous as you have been during this time. Um, we are blessed by your generosity. There are many in our community who continue to need um, additional services, and so if you would continue to be generous stewards of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, as you know, you can give online, and you can also give by sending your offerings into the church office. It is our blessing to be able to continue to serve in many ways to continue the work that needs to be done so that all may have what is needed during this time. Thank you. Join me in the dedication of offering. Gracious and powerful God, you are Lord of all. We bring our tithes and offerings in gratitude for all we have received. Multiply them and use them for good of your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us in our closing song, Good, Good Father.
it's who God is. God is love, and you are loved by the creator, redeemer, sustainer, God, so that you might go forth and love as you are loved. Spread the good news. God is near. Go forth in grace and peace. Amen. Thank you.